So we're going to have a look at the little 410 today and just to see what it's capable of and then we can uh, compare it with the 12 bore. So we're going to go to 55 yards, our normal um, game testing range where we test all our uh, game loads on. So we might as well chuck it straight into the uh, into the fire pit and see how we go on with it. We're going to uh, be testing the two and a half inch uh, four ten cartridge first. This is the f the four long cartridge. It's uh, a number six. Quite often used on on grouse and uh, other quarry, but I don't think it's fair to use uh, a four ten small load like this on even on grouse. I know sometimes they're pretty close. But it's a fairly tough bird and um, I wouldn't like to think I would put in a small amount of shot like that on something that would be 40 yards away for the second shot. <coughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll see what it looks like on the pattern plate first. Uh, it's first time I've patterned a, a 14 so we might get a little shock. Now this is our normal as I say, uh, <coughs> patterning distance for, for game loads. 55 yard is a very, very good bird. And I've heard tell that people shoot uh, pigeons and other game birds, partridge, and uh, bragging that they're shooting birds at 55 yard away with a 410. Well, this is the little two and a half inch uh, number six. And as you can see, I could physically count the pellets. There isn't one on the body of the bird at all. And the gaps at that range in this load is, as you can see, it's unbelievable. I wouldn't like to think I was stood out in the field trying to shoot game with this little load. I would think that um, all that feel it, they could probably shoot me at 55 yard in the in the backside, and then I'd get a nice sting, but I don't think it'd do any harm. If you look at those pellets, two of them, two of them is nearly whole, and two of them is in half. This is a three foot by four foot card, maybe five foot. But I wouldn't say that would be any use for anything. Gaps in them that you could get a football through. So I just can't see the point in uh, at all in that for shooting at anything. Right, I've got some three inch. So it's 18, 18 grams, 410, number eight shot. And we're gonna pattern it the same distance as I pattern my clay loads at 40 yards and uh, let's just see what uh, what this yields. Uh, that was a a significant uh, difference in the in the noise. So the, the, obviously it's uh, it's got a, a larger charge of powder, and uh, I would think there'll be a, a few more pellets on with it being in eight anyway. And we are 15 yard nearer to the pattern plate but it's a clay uh, target test is this one so well, let's have a look see what it's done. There's a few more pellets but not that many more it is a little bit because uh, we're closer anyway we've managed to get one pellet on the uh, on the DVD as I said there is a few more pellets very patchy still big gaps there seems to be a a flurry of pellets here in, in, in groups. What I have noticed is this little object here, which is the wad. That's the base of the plaswad that holds the shot, and there's pellets stuck in there, and that's obviously why it's carried so far. I've never seen a wad hit the pattern plate at 40 yards away. Now, uh, whether anybody has experienced this before with 14 ammo, I don't know. Um, just might be a phenomenon. I've got another of the same make in my pocket and we're going to try that and see if it happens again. It's got eight on the uh, 
on the shell, but I know this is a, a foreign mech cartridge. I suspect it'll be Spanish or French. But what we did notice, and this I've just verified that, that it's got eight on the wrapper on the packet, but it, I've just weighed the pellet and it is a seven and a half. Which, as all everybody knows, that uh, foreign sizes of pellets do differ. There could be, uh, instead of an eight, it could be a seven or a seven and a half. But this has proven to be a seven and a half. As I said, we've got one pellet on the DVD. There's nothing else on it. It's barely broke through. It's not cracked it, it's just bumped it. Obviously, the, um, I can see where it's, it's hit the target, the, the, the uh, pattern plate. Uh, harder than what the two and a half inch cartridge did. So I suspect that that was um, pepped up a little bit with the uh, with its powder load. There's the pattern in all, in all its glory and you can see the, the massive gaps in that. But there's just these three little hot spots here where, it's, where there's enough pellets to drop on the body of a bird or a clay. So we'll have, we're going to do the, the same three inch cartridge now and we're going to come to 30 yard which is, uh, I'm going to use the same DVD again because at 30 yard I'll, it'll give me a good, in, a good uh, guide on the impact of the pellet at 30 yard as opposed to 40 yard because I've got an indentation still there. We'll just put a red mark there so we know which pellet this is anyway, what we shot before. Bang on 30 yard. This, will, this is probably the optimum distance for a 410, but I'm going to use the same cartridge, the 3 inch. It's got 8 on the package, but I've weighed the pellets and they, they are a 7.5. Right, as, a, as you can see, we've got one pellet that has had enough energy to uh, to smash the bottom off the uh, the DVD, and um, it's penetrated it quite well. So at 30 yard, we've got a more even pattern, something with uh, with more energy. So I've no doubt in my mind that we'll be quite happy to shoot this on live quarry, but the, as I say, this is a 18 gram, seven and a half. Um, I would think that'd be okay. It would be okay on, a, on pigeon at 25, 30 yard away. I'm not sure I'd be happy to shoot it at a pheasant at, at 35 yard away or 30 yard away. Now we, 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 we've got the camera very close to where the wads hit and you can see there's lead in that. So this is still carrying lead in the bottom of this wad. That's, that's definitely lead dust that's on that. There's nothing here to convince me to, to buy a 410 or encourage youngsters to start with a 410 because the, there'll be more missing than hitting on inanimate targets and I would have grave concerns about sending any youngster out with uh, limited skills, beginners, on a partridge day and hoping to, uh, to do any, uh, any good at all. My advice is always start with a 28 bore on youngsters. Forget about the 410. The 410 is an expert's gun, because you've got to be an expert to be able to put that on quarry and even a clay pigeon. We've actually got two pellets on it. One's bounced out, one, it's bounced out altogether, and this one's penetrated and cracked it. Let's see what sort of pattern we've got. I, I expected a few pellets stuck in there, but there's nothing there at all. There's a, a slight bit of smoke, which tells me they've got a fair uh, impact and I think they would be okay on 25-30 yard pigeons, 25-30 yard parties even. But there's there's an area here which, that's got a, the concentration of pellets and the north 
very sparse at that side. So, so they are sort of patchy, but at 30 yard, you know, you would you, you get a bit of joy there. But I'm going to put a 28 gram seven and a half 12 bore in now, and we'll just see the difference. All things being fair, I've rechecked it for 30 yard. Of course, we're going to do the 12 bore now. Black gold seven and a half. Well, we'll just see what the what they're going to do at the same distance. We've just shot that at 410. That's the the, the 28 gram seven and a half. Obviously, it's got 10 10 more grams in than what the 18 gram 410 had. As you can see, it's destroyed the uh, the DVD altogether at 30 yard, and there's no clear will get through that pattern at all. It's a really concentrated pattern. Plasma, of course, but I'll do the same thing we with the fibre. The fibre will, will look no different. The black gold fibre is uh, is as good as any 28 gram we'll get. 22 pellets on the clear. That would just be a pile of dust. I'd be quite happy to shoot them at Pigeon or Parties at, uh, at up to 30 yards. There's another five or six yard in them anyway at killing power. They're so powerful. As I suspected, it's, you can see the power of that. It's, it's absolutely smoked. At 30 yards, there'll be nothing left of these pellets. In fact, they're all fragmentized anyway. Yeah, there's bits and, bits and pieces here. It's just shattered the pellets altogether. Really hard hitting. I don't think a lizard could get through that pattern without touching a pellet. We're going to go do a bit more with 410. Obviously I'm going to try some bigger pellets to see if the, the pattern does hold any better with a bigger pellet and uh, get some 3 inch, I think we can get up to 22 grams or I might be wrong, they might be able to get 24 grams in a, in a, in a 3 inch 410. I'll, uh, I'll take some advice on that. As I say, it's not a load that I use whatsoever and would never use a uh, shooting game. But we've got to do more intensive uh, pattern testing with them on you know, different shot sizes, different uh, powders, different cartridges and uh, different uh, load sizes. So we've got a bit more to do yet before we come to an instantaneous decision. But I've got a feeling that I ain't going to be persuaded to uh, to move away from my 12 bore. Not for game shooting anyway. I can see the the fun side of it on a clear day if everybody was shooting four tens. Um, it's got a, uh, a fun aspect to it. Actually somebody uh, once said that it's easier to get to win a world championship with a 410 than it is with a 12 bore, and the reason for that is there might be 50 to 100 people that shoot 410s in, in the in the world in the so-called world championships in the world championship that I attend. There's 2,000 people attend them all, all trying to to win that title. And they don't, I ain't seen anybody turn up with a 14 at the competitions that I go at. So let's see anyway, we'll, we'll, that'll conclude it for today. I'll get some more 410 loads and then I'm going to move on to the 28 bore, which I think is a more capable load. And, and then step above into the 20 bore. So stay tuned. These tests are conducted under layman's terms. The tests are not conclusive and are only meant to be a guide in choosing the correct gun and load for the quarry intended.